so I mean, obviously, there's a reason that myself and a lot of the agents from our office, the top agents from our office, are working with you, and that's because uh, you're great at what you do. It's never about the money. As funny as what I do is so tied to money and the cost yeah. of things, it's always about making sure people are advised, they feel comfortable, they go in eyes wide open, and I'm able to share that information with them so they feel comfortable. It's about the whole big picture. So I think that's you know probably the the little bit extra that I add is just giving that extra advice okay. maybe listening a little bit well hey I wanted to say thanks for uh, taking the time to actually jump in on this call with me I think a lot of people just have some questions about the, the uncertainty out there for me work is very different than it was a month ago and I'm sure for you too so what have you seen change I guess business as usual with some accommodations which I think is probably the yeah. best way to put it in a one sentence. Um, we are still yeah. lending. We are still actively working with people. Um, the lenders, the appraisers, the realtors, everybody is really doing the best they can to service the clients and give them the information they need and still allow them to continue on with their plans. It's just taking maybe a little bit more time or some accommodations such as appraisers not going into the property and going on the outside of the building, taking measurements. Uh, some of the, the sellers inside might be sending photos and things like that to uh, keep the human contact element out of it. Uh, but a lot of lenders have actually switched to just an online evaluation model, which allows more of a, a data support. But certainly they're trying to do their best to limit that uh, as an issue for people. One of the biggest questions that you get and I certainly get some of it too is you know uh, what should I do with my mortgage like should I be refinancing it where do things land and I, he I keep hearing that the, the bank is dropping interest rates I mean are you getting a lot of those phone calls absolutely so the big thing is people kind of instantly in their mind go to worst case scenario and they start worrying what's going to happen and words like jacked up and skyrocket and you know yes. things like that start getting thrown around and really the reality is that the variable rates for the existing clients that had them have gone astronomically low because yeah. the Bank of Canada dropped the prime rate by one and a half percent which is unprecedented let yes. alone in a in a two-week period I mean it's just unheard of um, so that being said there really are people that are paying well under two percent but on the other hand of that if you think of it from a lender perspective all of those mortgage that they mortgages that they hold are now under two percent and perhaps also risky because they don't know what percentage of those mortgages are going to ask for payment deferrals or may be impacted by job loss or layoff and things like that so what the banks basically did was also increase some of the rates on the fixed and variable side as far as what they were offering on the on the other end yeah. um, um, so that's where some of that confusion comes from, which is well, how come prime so low? Why is you know, fixed rates a little bit closer to 3% right now? Yes. And so that being said, 3% is not a bad number at no. all. And it's where yeah. we were before all of this kind of happened. We were just under. And yeah. then we did take a dip down for about a week and a half. There was a really low rate. And then now we've trickled back upwards to 3%. But I think from what I've been hearing and, and listening to economists, they certainly are predicting that things are gonna level off a little bit. There's a bit of a, just a response to say, let's maybe pump the brakes a little bit and not get involved in some contracts that people are uncertain right now. And then they're going to maybe have some issues down the road. This week, the last couple of days, uh, lenders have, have been slowly bringing rates back downward again. So. Okay. For it to go from, you know, 2.6 range to 3.2 was kind of the the big gap that I saw. It, yeah. Again, it, it sounds huge, but it's not. Um, yeah. And it's just a reaction to what's going on. And now whatever normal is going to be going forward, we are starting to even just see it, it level off and become normalized again. Looking down the road a little bit, are things going to change much as far as the ease or difficulty of getting financing? I think there'll be a mixture. I think some, in, and we've already seen a little bit in terms of um, investor type mortgages um, being a little bit more difficult right now. Um, some of the, the major 
financial institutions that offer HELOCs or secured lines of credit um, have limited that you can use that for a down payment to purchase uh, yes. rental properties. So um, right now, I would say that th that's not a legislative change from the government. That's yeah. an institutional choice. And I think yeah. right now that's just a pure reaction to what's going on. And they're saying, you know what? Let's just take that riskier portion of our business and put it on the back burner right now yep. and take care of primary homes where people live. But in terms of going forward, we were very close to um, our stress test being reassessed and yep. all of this kind of hit. So yes. if I were to make one prediction, I really do think once the government is able to put out the fire and actually take a beat, they're probably yep. going to have to reassess um, that stress test and perhaps you know remove it or reduce it a little bit further we did get a slight decrease of 15 basis points so yep. that stress test now is 5.04 yep um so that in dollars reflects about 10,000 per buyer that they can yep. pre-approve for more or approve for more uh it's not a huge increase but any little increase will take okay. right now for sure yeah um, so I think that will be something that we'll see come down the line uh, because some folks will, especially small business owners, are going to be impacted and they still need somewhere to live. Um, yeah. And even if worst case scenario, people needed to downsize, they still need somewhere to live. So they yeah. need to be able to qualify. Is, do you feel like uh, there's potentially a bit of an opportunity for first time home buyers coming out of this situation, uh, you know, finally, uh, uh, you know, housing prices will drop or mortgage rates are lower or anything any vary of that a variable of that and some of it is less or more true right yeah I mean I think it's hard to know after um, they release us out <laughs> of our, our social uh, distancing measures and everything, yeah. how um, that will respond. Because again, it might actually make it tougher in the sense that there will be some buyers waiting. Uh, and if everybody's kind of racing to those properties right away, perhaps there will be more competition. But yeah. right now, I mean, information is key. Preparation is key. Speaking to a professional, getting your yeah. ducks in a row. Uh, okay. Take the time now. I have lots of folks that are getting pre-approved and saying, you know, we're we're actively looking as much as we can. There's not much coming out right now, but as yeah. they come out, we're ready to go. Um, and just, you know, taking the time now to get your paperwork in order. So if we do need to shorten our conditions, remove our conditions, we're yeah. confident in doing so um, yeah. while still protecting our, our clients, right? So. Yeah. For sure. I yeah, think certainly right. there'll be some opportunity and if they do decrease that stress test, I think we'll definitely see some openings come up for uh, the first time buyers as well because in my opinion they're the ones that are suffering the most which yes. is kind of backwards and we've known that since B20 came out. I'm an investor, a real estate investor and um, have lots of clients that are that you've helped as well. I mean, um, do you see any more difficulty there? I know we touched on HELOCs before. Um, do you see any kind of things tightening up for, for from a lending side of things for investors? At the end of the day, I think as long as um, the folks are, I mean, the big part is that leveraging activity of using secured lines of credits. If, if that's going to start being paired back on, then that will be the biggest test because coming up with 20% down to buy an investment property is a significant amount of money. So yeah. you're still gainfully employed, able to show that you can debt service owning that property um, with the stringent already policies that are in place. I mean, I'm just going to speak in general terms, but on average, um, lenders use about 50% of the rental income that's derived from that property for qualification. Yep. So they're only using half the income, you're still needing that employment, you've got to come up with your own 20% down. Um, so those will already be there plus your stress test. So yep. I feel there's multi-layer protection for them. Um, but you know, if they do get strapped on cash, they will pair back on lending to investors because people don't need more than one mortgage, they need a home to live in, right? Yes. So when we look at ass assessing needs versus wants, um, 
if you were really in dire straits, you would probably sell your investment property and keep where you live. So yes. that, you know, those are the first things we kind of look at. So right. could there, could that happen if things were to really go bad? Sure. Uh, yeah. But do I think we're anywhere near that? No, I don't. Um, the government has been very, very good at um, encouraging the banks and releasing uh, different reserves that the banks normally have to have um, yeah. so that they can liquidate that cash so they can continue to inject it to the consumers and keep things going. You know, overall, I mean, just to leave on that note too, I mean, I'm very optimistic about where where we'll land and that the fact that we will land on our feet uh, as a city and our economy and just everybody here in the London and surrounding area and it's it's always nice to have somebody like you come on and shed a bit of light on kind of the financing mortgage side of things and I know lots of people have lots of questions so uh, most of all I just want to say thank you for taking the time out of your uh, busy day and uh, with you. your family to come and uh, join me and join some of these people and uh, I know it's been helpful for me and I'm sure it'll be helpful for them. Awesome. Well, so yeah absolutely anytime i really appreciate it for sure and it's nice to see a friendly face and talk about yeah. some stuff so definitely anytime yeah that's right for all sure. right that's awesome thanks amber all right thank you have yeah. a great rest of your day yeah you too take care, take care. Yep. bye, bye.